we're picking up on this same series and uh, it's called Stop Being Selfish and Prosper. The reason I called it that, Stop Being Selfish, is people think that when we're looking at finances, we're being selfish and people can have a bad attitude about that. And I don't believe that's, and I believe God gave me that title. And I believe the reason is because, and let me say this, do you realize God needs channels on the earth to bring his promises through? God needs channels on the earth to bring his promises through. Now, how many channels do we have in here this morning? Hands up, hands up. You should be seeing yourself as a channel. A channel, if your hand's not up, I want to know why. As you're seeing yourself as a channel of blessing. Hands not up there, I'll talk with you afterwards to explain. Uh, explain why. I'm not going to say any names because this is going all over the world. But um, anyway, so uh, we want to be channels of blessing. Amen. Yeah, fantastic. So we're bringing his promises through and he does it one of the ways that he does bringing his promises and his blessings through us is through giving now the great expression of love is giving thank you very much for those few week amens no do uh, do link in i want it's great to have audience participation church participation listen to this very interesting there's a doctor called Carl Mennings, or Menninger, who is the famous, uh, founder of the famous Manager Clinic. He says, listen to this, generous people are rarely ever mentally ill because giving is the highest level of living. Isn't that fantastic? Absolutely so, I'm gonna read that again, he says, Generous people are rarely ever mentally ill because giving is the highest level of living. So if you're not a giver, and I know you all are, but if you're not a giver, and I'm speaking to our online uh, friends as well, if you're not a giver, then you're not really living. Now the world would argue with that. The world isn't into giving. Well, they are, I think, the, the world's wonderful. You have all these big fundraising things and they give millions. And so credit, and I think our country, our nation is very, very good for that. But giving is the highest level of living. Now, I want to start, and that's interesting because we just had a little video on for, um, for the kiddies. I'm going to move that over there because I'm getting confused here. Uh, for the children, as Children's Church isn't open. And we've uh, just had a little video, and what they've been talking about on this video is just what we're going to come into here, so that's very appropriate. So if you look in your Bible at Matthew 6, verse 19 to 21, please, because Jesus is speaking, and in Matthew 6, and I'm going to be reading it from the Amplified... Matthew 6, verse 19. Jesus said, Do not gather and heap up and store for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust and worm destroy and where thieves break through and steal. But, so don't do that, but do this. Gather and heap up and store for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor worm consume and destroy and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So it's an issue really. Giving is a, 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 a temperature gauge of where your heart's at. Thank you for those few week amens. Heavenly Father, as we get into your word, we thank you that you reveal to us what we need to see and what we need to hear. And Father, this series, I believe, is so important for the days ahead because the world is going into economic crises. But I don't believe that we need to yield to that if we look at what your word says and follow your principles. So Father God, help us understand. Give us revelation, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is why I'm doing this course right now, because God doesn't want us to suffer lack. God doesn't want us to suffer job losses, etc. And if any of you are believing God for a job, you can email in, let us know, please, what it is, and we'll stand with you and be in prayer for you. 
So God wants you to have treasure. See, people get upset. Ooh, God doesn't want us to have. It's all sinful and everything. Well, no, God doesn't mind you having as long as what you want of trusting God for is you're having it and it's not having you. You understand? So it's very, very important. God's not upset about it. You read through in the Old Testament, you've got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all David, uh, Solomon, hugely wealthy, extremely wealthy. But if you're just looking to God for wealth, just for yourself, I think you'll probably guarantee that you're not going to have it. Yeah? Yeah? Would you agree? You know, you know I'm right. Because really what, we're, what we should be doing is looking to the fact that God is um, wanting to bless us. In fact, he has already blessed us, Ephesians says, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, spiritual and in the natural. But he wants, we, people should look at us and think, how come those Christians are so blessed? We're all struggling. How come Christians are so blessed? What is it they're doing? Well, we're doing the word. Amen. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So he wants us to have treasure. We've just read that. But where are you storing your treasure? Now, it, not this week, but next week, I'm going to look at some, some financial principles from a scriptural point of view. But God is wanting us to, uh, you know, remember in Malachi where it says your storehouses will be full. So not, God's not against us having uh, savings. And I'm going to talk about all that more next week. But having savings, he's not. And he's here. We see that he wants us to have treasure. But where is our treasure or where is our heart? Because it's so important to recognize that treasure and heart is linked up. We can see that in this scripture here. So really, would, would you agree with me that this is actually a heart issue? Yeah. Giving, it's a heart issue. It's not just talking about money, but it's talking about the condition of your heart. Um, and uh, that's so important for us, to, for us to recognize. Now, giving then protects you. I'm going to say that again so we've got it. Giving protects you. How, what do you mean, Pastor Di? Well, it protects your heart. Giving, being a giver, if you're a hoarder and you're mean and you don't want to, you know, uh, you don't want to give, then check your heart. Because a giving heart, a loving heart, wants to give, give, give. Doesn't it? It's not a case of what we want to hold back. Now, I'm not saying that we need to be irresponsible because we don't. We, if we've got bills to pay and we've got families to feed, we do need to be responsible. But if what, if you, if what you've got is more than enough, because that's how God intends to bless us, if what you've got is more than enough, then find what you're doing is working. But for most people, they don't have over and above. They just have sufficient to meet their needs. And... Uh, that's, I believe, what God says. He wants to meet our needs according to his riches in glory because we limit God to our needs. And the scripture, we're going to look at it in a minute, but the scripture says meet, God wants to meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. That's the measure of how much God wants to bless us. Not to our limitation, but he's limitless. According to his riches in glory. I mean, heavenly, heavenly, uh, heavenly riches. Now, giving then, so I've said giving protects you, but let me enlarge on that. Giving is a safeguard. It protects your heart. In the days that we live, we need to make sure that our hearts are protected. We know in Proverbs it says, guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. So we need to... Keep our hearts guarded. Who's going to do that for us? Is the Lord going to do that for us? No, well done. The Lord is not. That's an instruction he gives to us. And he says, you guard your heart. Because out of it, out of your heart, flows everything to do with your life. Guarding your heart. Now, in Mark 4, so what do we need to guard our heart from? Well, there's one of them that uh, is very obvious as far as I'm concerned, and that is in the book of Mark. No, I'm going to read it. I've got three Bibles up here, which is not particularly a good idea. Mark 4. Mark 4, remember the, the parable of the sower? 
and the sower and the seed, and the sower sows the seed. Oh, I've got it here. Look, I should have done that. Mark 4. Let's just remind ourselves of what this says here. Mark 4. I'm just going to, he, you know, he's, Jesus started off saying to the disciples, the sower goes out, and, and then later on, he, a few verses down, he then starts explaining, you know, this parable. So here, Jesus, from, from verse 13 of Mark 4, Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? Then how will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes immediately to take it away. Others, like seed sown on rocky ground, hear the word, receive it with joy, but since they've no root in themselves, we're all coming back to the heart in a minute, they have no root in themselves, it only lasts a short time, and when trouble or persecution quickly come because of the word, then they fall away. Because the whole principle Jesus is talking about here is uh, reproducing, having fruit. So, uh, since they have no root, still others like seeds sown among thorns hear the word, but the worries of this life, see that word worries or the cares, another version may say, the worries or the cares of this life. Oh, are the worries and cares in life? Yeah, yeah. Don't be so super spiritual. Of course there are. Absolutely. The deceitfulness of wealth. Wealth can deceive you. Very much so. And the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Everyone go, eh. <laughs> Choking the word. See? We don't want that to happen, do we? And, and when that happens, it makes the word unfruitful. Every time you listen to a message, when you look into the word, when you read it yourself, when you're hearing the word, you're hearing it this morning, God is wanting it to produce in you. The word is alive, it's active, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And once that word if it's good soil, because Jesus then carries on to say, well, I'll see. On others, like seed sown on good soil, they hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, or even 100 times what was sown. So is God against us having? No, no. In fact, he's wanting us 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. He's wanting that word to produce in our lives. Now, we're talking about finances because it's relevant at the moment. But that's for healing, for any area in your life that you want the word to produce. So it's important, and God wants to see that. Now, Mark 13, sorry, we've read that, but um, comes in and chokes the word from your heart. The deceitfulness of riches steals the word from our heart. So we had, if we don't have a right heart attitude towards finances, and finances can be because it's so important for our existence, finances can be very, cause us to be very deceived. It can change our hearts. We can say, oh yeah, I'm a giver. Oh yeah, it's amazing how you people say, oh yes. Oh yeah, I'm, oh I give, oh yes. I'm quiet in here this morning because the proof's in the pudding. Let's see how much we are willing to give when the rubber hits the road. Let's see how much we're willing to give and trust God. Now, faith is so important in all that we're talking about. Everything we talk about, faith is important. And I believe the time's up ahead. We need to fine tune our faith. Faith is simply trusting God in whatever area that we need God to move in in our lives. And so, Trusting God for finances up ahead over the days and weeks, months, who knows years, is, is going to be so important. Because sometimes there's going to be some avenues that closed. Well, I won't say that because it's personal, but some avenues that, that your finances stop coming in. Then you need to know where your, your trust is. Are you trusting in your, your job? Are you trusting in your wage packet? 
Are you for, for some? Thank God you were you were on furlough or whatever. You you, you know you still carried on getting paid even though uh, you were laid off for a while. Uh, we're so blessed in this country. Many people have that. You're so blessed. Some of us self-employed. That wasn't quite the case. Amen. <laughs> So you've got to decide, are you trusting God or are you relying on your pay packet? I believe the time's up ahead. We need, and the scene, we're seeing so many people losing their jobs, and I think it's only just starting. And it's sad. We need to be praying for people. But they need to realize that is God, not God's will. God does not want people to suffer lack. He doesn't. He's a good God. He's El Shaddai, not El Chipo. He's not El Chipo. He's El, El Shaddai. What does that mean? Our God is in more than enough. He gives more than enough. Amen? And I'm wanting to encourage our faith this morning. Don't limit God with our faith. Our lack of faith will limit God. But our faith is, uh, is uh, important that we keep it plugged in. I, it's important for me. Do you know what? When I've been filming this the last 20 weeks, there's been nobody in here, no distractions, nobody walking about. And uh, so I need to keep focused. I'm sorry. So I'm apologizing a little bit. Anyway, giving then, we've said, opposes selfishness and shows trust in the Lord and his word. Giving opposes selfishness and shows trust in the Lord. If you're not really trusting God, you're going to be holding on to everything. What's mine is mine. Well, no, who, who has that attitude? That's a terrible attitude and shows a condition of your heart. Everything that we have belongs to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And without him, we wouldn't be alive. Without him, we wouldn't be able to work. Without God, we would not have all the blessings. So we need to be careful that we don't even recognize we're relying on ourselves or our own pay packet. Because really, that can substitute God. And we don't want anything to substitute God, do we? Now, so where you give as well, there will be your heart. Jesus just said the treasures, where, where you give will show where your treasure is, where your heart is. And bless you, the people in the church and many people in many churches, you've shown where your heart is because you've been faithful to continue to give, to continue to tithe. But um, because your heart is with the church, your heart is with whatever church it is you go to. Um, you should be giving and tithing, even if you're not literally because... Those who are still feeding, the church is still feeding, okay, online, but still feeding and feeding and feeding, need to make sure that you can, can support. So support your church. Those of you looking, watching in, wherever you are in the world, support your church because it's so important. God looks to you to be the vessel, the channel to give through and particularly to your church. Amen. Thank you. Uh, now, the word says, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Now, your affection, or you could say, set your heart on things above, not on things of the earth. We've had to learn that lesson a lot through lockdown, haven't we? So many things that we thought we needed, so many things that we thought we relied on, was, uh, uh, we had to have a change of thinking on that, didn't we? So if you want to keep your heart upon God, you're going to have to put God first place in your finances. That's the first step to having assurance, knowing where your faith is, having assurance that no matter what happens on the earth, and if you think what we've just gone through, it's all going to be over, nobody knows how long it's going to take to be official over, but I'm sure there's lots of other things similar all ready to come in and to attack because Jesus said in the last days we would have a lot of these things. Amen. Amen. So tithing and offering uh, or giving keeps a protection and a safeguard on your heart. If you've learned nothing else this morning, we can learn that. How can I safeguard my heart? How can I protect my heart? Make sure I keep giving, keep giving, keep giving. 
Uh, do you contribute to the work of God's kingdom or do you just take all the time? Well, I just come to church and I, uh, I come to get. Shame on you. That woke a few of you up. Shame on you because that's not the mentality or the heart of a child of God. We're on this earth to be givers. We're on this earth to help build the kingdom of God, aren't we? Amen. So that's what our attitude should be. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first. Second, third, fourth. No, 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 no. Seek first the kingdom of God. And then all these other things Jesus talked about, all these other things will be added. Hey, if, do you want to be a person that God adds to? Or do you want to be a person that is leaking and subtract, subtraction? I know what I choose. And I, you're not stupid, are you? So you're going to be choosing the same thing. We want God to add to us all the time. Amen. So seek first the kingdom of God. And then all these other things will be added to us. Well, we've got about seven minutes to go, so let's just rattle along a little bit more. I'm back in the Amplified again for this next scripture, and that's James chapter 4. James chapter 4, if you want to turn there, that would be great. It's good to look at the Word and make sure what I'm telling you is in the Bible. James chapter 4, verse 13 to 17, and this is what uh, it says here. Come now. You who say today or tomorrow we'll go to such and such a city and spend a year there and carry on our business and make money. Yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen tomorrow. Now how true is that today? How true is that in 2020? All the things that we thought we could rely on. All the plans that we thought we could make. And, and absolutely we can't. Even tomorrow we don't know what's going to happen as far as what the government says. We're all sitting with masks on here, you good little spiritual, beautiful people. But um, we just don't know. It's so important that we, uh, we recognize that we don't know. So even thousands of years ago, James said, those of you who say, come on, we'll do this and we'll do that. You just don't know. You do not know the least thing about where. What is the nature of your life? He says, you're really a wisp of vapor. Well, some of us have put a few pounds on over lockdown, so we're not quite as wispy maybe as we were. Amen? Come on, you're, you're all gone shy just because the camera's rolling. Uh, but a wisp of vapor, a puff of smoke, a mist that is visible for a little while and then disappears into thin air, that's what our lives can be like. But you ought to instead say, verse 15, if the Lord is willing, we shall live and we shall do this and we shall do that. But, verse 16, as it is, you boast falsely in your presumption and your self-conceit. And all such boasting is wrong. Verse 17, so to any person who knows what is right to do, but does not do it to him or to her, it is sin. So that really applies, you know, what can you rely on? Nothing. He was saying that thousands of years ago. Today, what can we rely on? Nothing, Nothing really. But the, but the one person that we can rely on is God. We've been through so much change. Even now, there's so much change going on. Nothing's the same. And for somebody who likes change, that's fine. But there's fine lines to it. And a lot of it's sort of strange and weird. And, but uh, we will adapt. We will get used to it. But I tell you what, God will help us. All the time he will help us. And you know what? My Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yay! He is. And so Jesus never changes. So build your house on the rock. So when the storms come, the rock is the word of God. Be doers of the word. So when the storms come, uh, you're not going to shake. You're not going to wobble or whatever. You're going to say, it's okay. Everything may shake all around me, but my God is my sufficiency. My God is all that I need. Jesus is my rock. His word is my rock. And so I will not shake. Let's just finish this now because we need to, uh, we need to close. And I'm just going to say this one thing. Prosperity then, and I did talk about this last week. 
And we see many times in the scriptures how many times the word prosperity is there. Prosperity means being fully blessed, being prosperous. And that will only come from an attitude of your heart. If the selfish there in your heart, God cannot pro prosper you. Did you understand that? So really for each one of us, we've all got selfishness in our hearts, haven't we? I hate it when I just look at things I say and do and I think, ah, oh, that's just so selfish. You know, the Bible says judge yourself lest you be judged. And we need to judge our selfishness. And if we're not willing to be givers, then big time we're selfish. Amen? Well, I hope that you got blessed with this word this morning. I hope that it's been helpful. And we're going to pick up again next week and see where and how and understand God's financial system. Let's just close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just bless you and we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father God, for all those listening all over the place, Lord God, and all those in here listening. Father, that we have revelation on what you're telling us in your word. We are grateful. We're so thankful. Please, Lord, help us, speak to us, correct us when necessary. If we need to judge ourselves, we need to check the attitude of our heart. Because, Lord, that's the way that we keep tender before you. Anyone under the sound of my voice um, who is, does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then you can know him. You can know that he wants to be in your life. You can know that he's paid the price for your sin. You can know that he's, God is not judging you, but God has made a way possible for you to have a relationship with him whilst on this earth and then spend eternity with him in heaven. Amen. Isn't that exciting? So if you've not made Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior, Savior we encourage you, all of us in church here this morning, we encourage you to do so. Ask him into your heart. He'll make you brand new. It's been good to be with you. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye.